Hey guys, so are we ready for year-end empties? Here we go. <laughs> um, I will preface this one by saying this is all of my hair care stuff. So yes, I do have super long hair, you guys know that. Um, so I, don't, I do go through a lot of hair care items, but this whole lower level here, or like the last line here, these are all items I finished up in November and December, the last two months of the year, which I think is amazing because that's like a third of the products, which I think is just, wow, it's crazy. But some of these things were in my shower all year. Like this one was in my cabinet all year. This was in my shower all year. And then a bunch of things, like I use these pretty regularly. So yeah, um, let's go through and go through all of my empties for hair care. So I have the, yes, I don't have any makeup on, hello. And I do have a sweater on, so we're just rolling with it right now. So I have the Pantene Pro-V Daily Moisture Renewal Shampoo and Conditioner. Those were okay. The Marc Anthony Strengthening Grow Long Shampoo and Conditioner. I loved these, I've already repurchased. Then we have the Love Beauty and Planet Coconut Oil and Ylang Ylang Shampoo. I would not repurchase that. This one is the Promise Organic Restorative Coconut Milk Conditioner with Aloe. I actually really did enjoy this one. Um, I got this from TJ Maxx or Marshall, so I don't think you can get that anymore. I finished up a full size of the Jersey Bounce from Lush. I did really like this at one point, but I don't know. I just, I don't really love it anymore, and I am going to keep the container to do the, like, return the container thing. So this is the only container I think out of all of these I'm actually going to be keeping. Then I have the Pantene 3-Minute Miracle Daily Moisture Renewal Conditioner. This one was actually super duper nice. I did like this one a lot. Then the Diva Curl Melt Into Moisture Matcha Butter Conditioning Mask. This was actually decently well too, although I feel like this is more geared towards like curly hair or drier hair. My hair is pretty normal, so yeah. Then the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I do like that one. And the Living Proof Timeless Pre-Shampoo Treatment. I absolutely love this. I only have a couple more in my collection, so I'm probably going to plan on using them up this year. But I absolutely love this. You can't get it anymore, and I've been getting them at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Then on to, like, hair care products. So these are, like, in-the-shower items. These are not in-the-shower items. So I'm kind of organizing this by how I would organize my, like, how I would do my hair. So I have my serums, my oil my um, air dry sprays and my oil spray. So that's kind of how I do it when I, you know, do my hair care stuff. Okay, so I have the Herbal Essences Bio Renew Hydrate Coconut Milk Oil Infused Cream. I didn't love this at first because I was using way too much product, but then when I realized I was using way too much product and I needed to use way less, I ended up loving this. So I would highly actually recommend this one and I would repurchase. This one's from Garnier Fructis, it's the Anti-Humidity Smoothing Milk. I do have a couple more of these ooh, in my collection somewhere, and I do really like this, so these are really good. And then I have a Living Proof No Frizz Nourishing Styling Cream. I did like this one, however, I didn't like it any more than those two, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay the uh, pretty penny for this one. And then I have the Garnier... Fruity Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum. This was an oil, so I would use this at the ends of my hair. And I finished a whole one of that one, which these take a long time to go through because you really don't need a lot. Then the Garnier Fructis Pure Clean Detangler and Air Dry uh, Spray. This one I absolutely love, but I've been trying to get away from some of the Garnier Fructis products because they're, you know, they're not cruelty free and they do like heavily test their products on animals. Um, more so than a lot of other brands do. So I've been trying to move into other brands. So I found this Not Your Mother's Part-Time Air Dry Accelerator that works just as well as this one. It is a little bit more pricey, but you can find these on sale at like Ulta and you can get your Ulta points and it's cruelty free. So I would actually recommend this one over this one. However, if you find this one for like a dollar, it's totally worth it. Like these are really, really good. Um, <clears throat> but I think from now on I'm going to really start focusing on buying these instead because of the cruelty-free status. 
And then I have the Eva NYC Main Magic 10 in 1 Primer. I absolutely love this. This is my last step for my hair and it just gives my hair the most beautiful shine. I absolutely love it, but you can definitely overuse this and make your hair look greasy, so be careful. I finished up one dry shampoo, which I'm actually surprised I even finished this up, honestly, because I don't use up dry shampoos often. This is the Chlorine dry shampoo with oat milk, like the original Chlorine one. This is probably my favorite dry shampoo I've ever tried. I haven't tried a ton, but out of all the ones I have tried, this has been my favorite. So then just finishing up the rest of the hair care items, which are all the foil packets that I used before my November ones and December ones. I finished up this NUX multi-purpose dry oil for face, hair, and body. This was an absolute no. It was horrible. I didn't like it at all, so no on that one. This is another one of the No Frizz Nourishing Styling Creams. Another Briogeo Don't Despair Repair. These are kind of like yucky <laughs> and oily. Um, this is the Garnier Fructis Nourishing Treat One Minute Hair Mask. I do absolutely love these hair masks. They are very, very good. Then I had a four pack of this Joico Defy Damage Protective Shield Mask Shampoo and Conditioner. So this was the shampoo and conditioner. I did really enjoy it. However, the shield and the mask, I actually purchased these themselves when they were on sale when Joico had a sale on Ulta. And I absolutely loved these. These were really good. This one is actually the serum that I'm using right now in my bathroom. So really enjoy those. And then the Alterna Cav Caviar Anti-Aging Restructuring Bond Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. I did really enjoy this one as well. And then a final one of these Love Beauty and Planet Argan Oil and Lavender Shampoo and Conditioner. I would not repurchase these. I didn't really love them that much. They were okay for a shampoo and conditioner, but I wouldn't repurchase. Okay, on to the empties that I emptied out in November and December, which is everything from the bottom row here. I emptied out the Herbal Essences Bio Renew Honey and Vitamin B Daily Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. Those were pretty good. I don't think I would repurchase, but they were okay. And then the Aussie Hair Insurance Leave-In Conditioner. I did not love this one. I won't be repurchasing. Also, it smells kind of weird. Then another one of these... Eva NYC Main Magic 10 in 1 primers. You guys know I love those. Then one of these Nature Love Scalp Scrub Apple Cider Vinegar to Clarify and Shine. This was okay. Um, I got this from TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I don't think I would repurchase this. However, it did its job as being a hair scrub, but the scrubby bits in it were so large that I could not physically get them out of this little teeny tiny tube. So for this company and this product specifically, it would have been better to have it in like a potted form like this. It would have worked out much better, but um, it did work okay. And my son actually used it a couple times and he said he liked it. So yeah, but I wouldn't repurchase because of the packaging. However, I did really like the product. Then the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing Moisture CC Cream. This was a first step serum for after the shower for me and I love this product. I finished a couple of these previ in previous years and I do really like that. Then the Amica Velveteen Dream Smoothing Balm. This was also a first step and I did really enjoy this one as well. I only got like four uses though out of this tiny little thing so it wasn't much. Then the R & Co Analog Cleansing Foam Conditioner. I don't need a conditioner in this form. This aerosol packaging is super, super wasteful and not environmentally friendly at all. These are very difficult to recycle. So for that reason, I don't purchase these at all, but when I do get them, I use them um, just because I don't wanna throw them away because that would be silly, so. Yeah, um, won't be repurchasing this. It was an okay product, but I don't need a cleansing foam conditioner. Okay, and then the final three foil packets that we have here were shampoos and conditioners that I used at the gym because we were redoing our bathroom and I was using these at the gym when we were redoing our bathroom in November. So that's why I have three of these, for three different showers for the week. So I did shower the night before it started and then the day after it ended. So that's why there's only three. Um, 
but this is the Verb Ghost Shampoo and Conditioner. I have highly considered repurchasing this. It is quite expensive, so I really need to wait for a really good sale, but I do, I do really like that. The Amica Velveteen Dream Smoothing Shampoo and Conditioner. I did like this one as well. And the La Playa, or it's just Playa, the Playa Everyday Shampoo and Supernatural Conditioner. These ones were okay. I don't remember absolutely loving it, but it was good for a shampoo and conditioner. It is very expensive, so I won't be repurchasing this, but it was good. Everything else is going to get recycled. This is the only thing that's going to get kept so that I can turn it back into Lush. And yeah, that was all my hair care. Update on these two aerosol cans. I just looked up my city's like recycling whatever and they do take these aerosol cans as long as they are completely empty. So I'm going to take these outside and spray them and just make sure they are 100% empty and then I can put them in the recycling bin. Um, I think that's what I ended up doing the last time but I had forgotten that that's how my city <laughs> recycles these because I don't want to just like I said throw them away when they can be recycled so I'm just going to take them outside spray them one last time to make sure they're completely empty and then I can throw them in the recycle bin. Okay you guys my second category I'm going to be talking about is my skincare category. This category is very obviously and clearly my biggest category of all <laughs> of my categories um, and so in my opinion it should be my skincare is very very important to me and I think it should be important to everyone so same rules apply here everything from this line and these perfumes up everything up is things that I previously used all of these samples all the way over to the full sizes are everything that I used in November and December so I am now hot as heck when I've been filming this for a while so I took off my sweater <laughs> um, and then same thing we're gonna start at the top I try to categorize categorize everything and then these little foil packets will just kind of go through them really quickly and masks will go through those very quickly so let's go <laughs> so I used up a full-size body wash the suave ocean breeze it's just a cheap body wash something for me to easily use up and then I used up Pearberry by Bath and Body Works I don't love that and I don't think I want to spend the price on that anymore the rituals yogi flow this was a aerosol can body wash not my favorite or shower gel this was Pure Silk Kiwi Berry Bliss. This was a shave cream. Definitely don't need those in my life. I can just use a body wash. My favorite body wash that I used all year is this Spongel Blossom Bliss Beyond Cleansing Body Wash Infused Buffer. This thing lasted me for like six months. It was amazing. I loved that and I would highly recommend if I get any more in the, my collection, I will definitely and gladly use those. And then I used up two like body scrubs. This is from Sol de Janeiro, the Brazilian Bod Buff. It was okay. I only got like three uses out of that. And then the Pure Lee's Coconut Oil and Coffee Sugar Body Scrub. That was okay as well. Body scrubs aren't my favorite, so, you know, it is what it is. Burt's Bees Soap, Bark, and Chamomile Deep Cleansing Cream. This thing is amazing. <laughs> it lasted me over a year in my shower and it's very, very gentle on sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, I highly recommend this. It's very, very gentle, but it cleans well. So that's why I like that one. Then the Peter Thomas Roth Water Drench Cloud Cream Cleanser. I did really like this and I would repurchase the Z Skin acne coffee face scrub it was okay dr brant pore derm abrasion pore perfecting exfoliator i did really enjoy this i wouldn't purchase because of the price point but i would gladly use more then some masks here we have the glam glow powerful or power mud dual cleanse treatment i think i ended up liking this one a lot and i have a couple more little samples of that the one that I absolutely loved was this one, the Origins Original Skin Retexturizing Mask with Rose Clay. This one's beautiful. You put it on as a mask, you jump in the shower, and then you scrub it on your face and it ends up being an exfoliator as well. It is a beautiful, beautiful product. I love this one. I do have two full sizes now that I'm going to be moving into soon. And then the Ulla Henriksen Hygie 
Hydroclay Detox Mask. It was okay. Um, I will use more, but I won't purchase that. The L'Oreal Pure Clay Mask with Argyle Pure, and I believe this was the green one. The green one's not my favorite. I believe this is the green one. The yellow and the orange were my favorite ones, so I just used this one up. Then I used this full-size toner from Platinum Skincare as the anti-aging toner. I really, really enjoyed that, but it is a high price point. Um, and I believe this is a Michigan-made company, which is why I wanted to buy from them, and it was great. A body spray. This was in my locker, like, all year at work, and it became, like, my signature scent at work, which was really funny, because I don't really love this scent anymore. This is the Cucumber Melon, and it was okay. I took the cap off because a cap broke on another one, so I'm just, you know, repurposing it. Two from Soap and Glory, the Hand Food and the Heal Genius. I didn't love either one of them. However, when I was using the Heal Genius lotion every single night, my foot, my foot, my feet were very, very nice and soft. So I did really like them. I wouldn't repurchase either. The Trader Joe's Pumpkin Body Butter. I'm pretty proud of myself for finishing up this huge full size. It was very, very thick and took me a long time to use, but I loved the scent and I would actually repurchase that one. The Fiji Passion Fruit Body Lotion. It was okay. Like I said, I don't love Bath & Body Works like skincare. I think it's very low quality, to be totally honest. They have beautiful scents, but the quality of the products is not that great. So for me personally, I don't think I'm going to be buying much from them anymore. Maybe their candles, though. Their candles are amazing. The Gold Bond Ultimate Healing Lotion with Aloe. This was in my pocket for work, for my work lotion, and I loved it. The Delectable Butter Balm Hand Cream. This one was amazing. Not only was the hand cream really, really good and not oily or greasy at all, but the scent was amazing. I loved the scent. Oh, oh man, this is such a good one. I do have this on my list to repurchase at some point in my life, but uh, yeah, I, I love that one. This one from Mudmasky is a sleep repair renewal renourish re nope renewal nourishing mask. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, I hated this for my skin. I'm pretty sure it started breaking me out, so I just started using this as a hand cream, and it worked fine. Um, way too pricey for what it was, though. All right, and on to facial moisturizers. We have the Caudalie Vino Source Moisturizing Sorbet. Love this one. The Ulla Henriksen Counterbalance Oil Control Hydrator. This was okay. I wouldn't repurchase, but I will use more. The Clinique Dramatically Different Hydrating Jelly. This was a beautiful product. The Belief True Cream, woo, True Cream Aqua Bomb. Um, as you guys can see, I finished up two of these this year. I absolutely love this item. I'm working on a full size in my collection right now. The Ulla Henriksen Nurture Me Moisturizing Cream. This was like a pink cream and it smelled amazing. I loved this one. Then on to eye creams. We finished up four this year, which is truly amazing to me. I didn't think I finished up that many eye creams in one year, but I'm pretty proud of myself. So I have the, I think this is Strivectin. Yeah, Strivectin Multi-Action R&R &R Eye Cream. I used up half of this as an eye cream and then it dried out very, very quickly. So I ended up using this as like a scar cream. It was okay. I wouldn't repurchase. The Belief Moisturizing Eye Balm, I really enjoyed that. The Clinique Pep Star Eye Cream, loved that one. And the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular, Stem Cellular Anti Wrinkle Eye Treatment, loved this as well, especially with this packaging. This gave such a cooling sensation on the eyes, I really enjoyed that. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of the items here for last year, or from you know, January through October. So I have a full size, what did, I was gonna say cream. <laughs> so I have a full size fragrance or perfume. This is the Davidoff Cool Water and I wore this at the beginning of the year and a couple of my girlfriends at work were like, oh my God, that reminds me of middle school. So it was kind of fun wearing it, but I won't be repurchasing that anytime soon. Um, I have the Silhouette in Bloom by Christian Siriano. This was from a luxury scent box, and I did not love it, but it was okay. I used up a deluxe size of the Versace Bright Crystal. Love this one. It's very, very light, and it does pair nicely with others, so that's one of the reasons why I really like it. 
I finished up three little samples. This is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. I don't like that one. The Black Opium by YSL. Love this one. And Replica by The Fireplace. And I loved this one as well. Okay, I'm just moving that to get out of the way of all of these like lip balm stuff. So I used up an oil. This was the only face oil I ended up using up in the year. This is the Rose Hip Oil from Australian Certified Organic Cold Pressed. It is Rose Hip Plus, I think is the brand. You can find this on Amazon. This was a beautiful, beautiful oil. I loved that one. It made my skin so nice. I used up four different lip products this year. The Tarte Quench Lip Rescue in the shade Nude, and I did dig it out because I loved it so much. This was such a good item. The Dr. Lip Tint in Sweet Potato Pigment. I love this one as well. I used every little bit I could possibly get out of there. The Beaker Paris Water Balm. I loved this one as well. All of these lip products I loved this year. This was such a beautiful, beautiful lip balm. I considered repurchasing it, but I have so many lip balms right now. I really need to wait until I actually need one, but I will be picking up this one. Or this one. This is the Clarence Hydra Essential Moisture Replenishing Lip Balm. This was beautiful. Such a good lip balm. This is on my list at Ulta to repurchase. This was truly, truly an amazing lip balm. I loved this one. Okay, and then I'll go through the foil packets and the masks, and then we'll go through what we finished up recently. So for masks, I finished up this Dr. Jark Shake and Shot Mask. I mean, this was so wasteful, you guys. There are so many steps to this. You have to like mix together two different things and you have to mix it. And then the product amount in here truly is enough for like two or three people. I just thought that this was very wasteful and I didn't enjoy it, I think because of that reason. And I paid $6.99 for it at TJ Maxx, which I don't believe is worth it. So pass on this one if you guys see that. But I finished up the same Natural Acai Berry Mask. This one I remember I liked. The Wander Beauty Baggage Claim Gold Eye Masks. Loved these. The BioBell Hashtag Happy Hour. Enjoyed that. I finally finished up these Esfolio Pumpkin Rejuvenate Masks. I really did enjoy these. However, I have a million masks. I don't need to buy any masks right now. The Collagen Firming Mask. from These are all from Lapcos or Lapcos. The Aloe Soothing Mask, the Honey Nourishing Mask, which was my favorite one out of all of these, the Aqua Hydrating Mask, then I used up the Charcoal Exfoliating and Cleansing Pad. This didn't work for shit. Um, <laughs> the Tony Moly Brightening um, I'm Real Lemon Sheet Mask. It was okay. Three of these chamomile garden or herb garden mask pack. These were beautiful, good masks. These were also beautiful. These Papa Recipe, what were the Bombay Black Honey mask pack. These were really, really good. The South Main Under Eye Eye Gels, um, they were okay. And the Dr. Jar Rubber Mask Firm Lover, this was also an excellent mask. I really did enjoy this. So. Yeah, I think this actually I finished up, yeah, this I finished up earlier in the year. I really do love these rubber masks, however, they are very expensive. This one I purchased at TJ Maxx for $7.99, but I think if you purchase them online, they're like twice the price, so they are quite pricey, um, but they are really nice. And then <laughs> on to the rest of the foil samples that I previously finished. This was a Cora Noni Glow face oil. I did enjoy this face oil. The Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask Little Sample Blister Packet. That was good. Clinique Pep Start 2-in-1 Exfoliating Cleanser. This made me want to buy this product. It was such a good cleanser. Two of these Amo Amora Vizica, I don't know, Budapest Cleansing Foams. I absolutely loved these, and I'm pretty sure you can purchase them at Ulta or Sephora. I looked it up. I can't remember which one, but these are on my list to repurchase. These were beautiful cleansing foams. The Tarte Maracuja Oil, the Tata Harper Regenerating Cleanser, I loved this one. The First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads, I believe that there was 10 pads in here, and I have another set in my locker. I use them, not regularly, but when my skin really needs some help, I'll use one of these. 
two of these Bliss Grapefruit and Aloe Body Butters. I really enjoyed those. Three of these items from Dr. Jart. Two of the Sika Pear Tiger Grass Repair Serum. Those were okay. And the color correcting treatment. This made me break out like nobody's business. The Ahava Extreme Minerals Time to Revitalize Day Cream. That was good. La Occitan Overnight Reset Oil in Serum. That was nice. The Sweat for Active Beauty Skin Balancing Cleansing Towelette. It did feel actually quite cleansing on my skin. However, I don't need something like that. The Clarins Multi-Active Jour. This was just a facial moisturizer. It was good. The Perfectly Posh Moisturize 911 Caffeinated Tightening Face Cream. I loved this. I considered repurchasing. The Shiseido White Lucent Multi-Bright Night Cream. I only got like almost a use on this, so I didn't even really get an opinion on it. The Sunbum Self-Tanning Towelette in sunless and <laughs> surprisingly it did tan my legs. The Glam Glow Galactic Cleanse Melting Jelly Balm Cleanser. That was good. The Bliss That's Incredipeel. What is it? One pad for like resurfacing kind of like the First Aid Beauty ones. That was good. And then my favorite thing of all of them is the Tarte Mermaid Skin Hy Hyaluronic H2O Serum. I have since purchased the full size because of this little sample packet. This little sample got me like five to eight uses. I can't even remember. I almost want to say it was like eight to ten now. But I got so many uses out of this and it did wonders for my skin. So I loved this. Okay, now on to the stuff that I finished in November and December, which is everything down here. So I finished up two lotions, which is amazing for me. These were both on their last leg, so I just really wanted to do that final push to get them both out. This is the Aveeno Active Naturals Daily Moisturizing Lotion. The problem with this one is that like here, I couldn't get any more product. The pumper, there was no more pumper working. So I ended up ripping the pump off of here and dumping it upside down into this jar to finish it off. So I ended up using it up, but um, yeah, my mom swears by this lotion. It's really truly not my favorite lotion, so I mean, it's okay. I also finished up the Aveeno Positively Nourishing Comforting Cocoa and Shea Butter Whipped Souffle. This was a pretty good lotion. I do, however, like this jar for lotions in the future that I can't get all the product out of, so I think I am going to be keeping this jar specifically for that reason. I finished up this. This is crazy to me. This I've had since Carter was born, like literally a baby born, and I just refused to use it for some reason. I love the scent of this, but this is the Johnson's Baby Creamy Oil with cocoa and shea butter, and I did absolutely loved finishing this up. It reminded me of when he was a baby, and yeah, I like it. I would totally repurchase that. <laughs> The Tree Hut Shea Sugar Scrub in Brazilian Nut. A lot of people love this scent, myself included. It's very like coffee-y without being like a coffee. It's very strange, the scent, but I did really enjoy this. I also finished up a little sample size of the Ulla Henriksen Truth Serum. I love this vitamin C serum. It's so good. The Amore Pacific, the Essential Cream Fluid. This was really good. I just wanted to get that final push to get this out of my collection. The Bath & Body Works Sparkling Lemoncello Hand Cream. This one was in my pocket at work also, along with this one and this one and this one. <laughs> so I do go through quite a few hand lotions because of work. I'm washing my hands all the time. I work at the hospital. So this one I used up. It was okay. I don't think I'm going to repurchase this brand or this scent. Then I used up the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. I had used this until it was almost gone. And then I found this in my collection. I must have taken it somewhere with me. And when I found it, I only had four uses left on this, like the tiniest bit of product left. And I just don't know why I didn't just finish it. So I finished it now. It was really good. Another one of these Believe True Cream Aqua Bombs. This is the one I had in my locker at work. If you were following me on Instagram, I wanted to use it up and I did. So I'm really happy about that. And I finished up the Tom Ford Black Orchid. I love this one. It's so good. When you spray it initially, it's very strong and kind of offensive, to be honest. 
but after you let it sit in with your skin chemistry it really does wonders and my husband loves it as well so love that one and finally let's go through the last bit of sample packets for the two months so I had two of these Tony Moly masks the I'm real this is the tea tree and this is the aloe mask they were okay I don't love the Tony Moly masks I think the price point is way too high for what you're getting these however I would spend a pretty penny on these masks because they actually do something and the serum in here will last you for like three additional days it's amazing but these are the pharmacy hydrating coconut gel masks if you look them up on Sephora you can still get them I believe it is yellow in color the hydrating one highly highly recommend especially if you get it at like the 20% off sale I think I am going to be picking up a few of these I know I have a million masks you guys don't judge me but these are so good and they actually hydrate my skin which is desperately needed here in the winter time I finished up the perfectly posh complexion perfection this was a face cleanser it was actually very nice the Perfectly Posh Never Grow Up Anti-Aging Serum. It was okay. I have a million other serums that I like way better. The Trish McAvoy Line Eraser Neck and Chest Essence. This is 0.12 fluid ounces, and I believe it was like $12. What? This little teeny tiny sample packet was $12? No, absolutely not. It was nice. No. <laughs> the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream. It was okay. The Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. I liked this, but I'm having a hard time using it, I think. It was just so creamy that it like kind of sat on top of my skin. So I'm not quite sure if my skin needed to be a little bit drier before I put this on. I'm not really sure, but it was good. The Sunday Riley Good Jeans All-in-One Lactic Acid Treatment. It was okay. And the Clinique Moisture Surge, you guys did see in a recent haul, I did purchase a full size of this, so you know I love that. So the final thing in here that I didn't get a chance to talk about yet is a nail polish. You guys can see there's about half of that product left in there. This was Northern Lights by Studio M. I believe I got this at like Meijer or Walmart maybe. Um, but it was such a beautiful nail polish. I tried to use it as much as I could and then it just like fully dried out. I can't even open it anymore because it's so dry in there. But um, yeah, I'm calling this a used and finished product because I did use so much of the product that it was getting down to the point where it was getting hard to get out and I was like doing that angle trick to try to get some more product out. So I did really love this one and I would definitely repurchase this. Once again, it's in the shade Northern Lights and it was a beautiful topper. All right, you guys, so that was all of the skincare that I finished this year. Once again, this category is always going to be my biggest category. It just, you know, I care about my skin. My skin is dry. <laughs> you guys know that. But I do really care about my skin, and I do go through skincare quite a bit. As you can see, if I hadn't gone through all of these sample packets of different items, I would have gotten through a lot more of these like deluxe sizes and full sizes. So I think I am going to work on some of my full size skincare this year. I do have a lot of these little sample guys that I am going to work through as well, but... I'm really going to start working hard on some of my full sizes this year and hopefully get through some of them. I have quite a few that um, really need to be worked on this year and next year to try to get out of my collection. But yes, this is all of my skincare for an entire year, which is a ton of skincare. But I'm very happy about my empties this year. And yeah, on to makeup empties. Okay guys, so on to the most exciting category of the year. I know this is the one that everybody looks forward to. So we are on to makeup for the final category that we are going to be talking about today. And same, same concept as before. Everything from this line up was previously in the year. And then everything in the bottom line here is all of my November and December empties. So things I haven't fully shared with you yet. Let's just start in the top corner over here. I put all my makeup removers up there. So we have the Ciate London Makeup Melter. This was an excellent makeup melter, but not for the price. The amount that you get in here is basically nothing compared to the price. So 
am I even like in there? <laughs> so um, I wouldn't buy this again, but I do recommend it if you can find a really good sale. Then we have two here, the Pharmacy Green Clean and the Vanilla or Vanilla, whatever, Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. These are both cleansing balms. They are both very good, but I would highly recommend the Pharmacy. Then we have some makeup removers. We have the Neutrogena ones. We have a full size, a travel size, and a single one that I just thought this one was going to dry out, so I figured I would use it before it went bad. I love those. I have... I'm actually quite proud of myself for not having a million of those in my empties this year because I've been really trying to focus on less waste in my environment. So makeup removing wipes are very wasteful and I consider the cleansing balms a lot more environmentally friendly. You get so many more uses out of those as opposed to the wipes. This was in my collection for quite a while. The Fresh Eyes from Tarte. There was 10 wipes in here. These were actually very, very good. So if I got any more, I would use them. But like I said, I'm not buying any more wipes at this point in my life. Then I finished up the Pure Miracle Mist Hydrating Spray. This is the spray that I had in my locker. It was marked for me to finish for 2019. And I finally finished it. I didn't love the sprayer on it because it had broken and it got everywhere. The product was okay though. Then the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. I didn't love this. I don't see the hype around this. This is way too expensive for what it is. And same thing, it was marked to finish for 2019. So a year later, here we are. I can't believe I didn't finish more setting sprays. Like that's very weird to me, I guess, but I guess I don't go through them as quickly as I thought. But anyways, I finished up two foundations. Well, technically three, I guess, this year. This one I finished up earlier on in the year, the Essence Pure Nude. Um, and this is like the no makeup makeup look. I loved this one. I don't think you can get it anymore except for maybe Amazon. But I was in the shade 10 Pure Beige and I would 100% recommend and purchase this again. The CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Fresh Complexion Foundation. This is the shade 115. Uh, there's only a tiny bit left in here. It started breaking me out I think because it was getting old but I still really love this and if they brought this back, I would purchase it. Then I finished up a tiny little sample of the Dr. Jart Premium BB Cream. This was in the shade, I think light, yes, 01 Light Medium. I absolutely love this. I do have a full size of it now and I will enjoy using it. I finished up one concealer, Ooh, finished up one concealer this year. Honestly, I'm not surprised. I don't go through concealer very often. Um, I don't use it on a daily basis. So this was the shade 15 Light Neutral from ColourPop, the no filter concealer, I think. And this was the older line before they like reformulated and brought in more shades. So this was just an older one. I finished up a Wet n Wild powder. I'm so glad to have this out of my collection. This was the shade Matte About You, the mattifying powder, like the white powder. And I was using this under my eyes to set my like concealer down or just under my eyes to brighten it just a little bit. And I did really like the product. However, I don't think I'm going to be purchasing from Wet n Wild very often anymore. I just don't love a lot of things that I've purchased from them. All right, let's move on to brows. I finished four brow products this year. I know it sounds like a lot, but three of them are like teeny tiny little samples. So the full size I finished was the ColourPop Brow Pencil in the shade Dope Taupe, which was way too blonde for me. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was very, very good. And I do love that brow product. product. However, I would get a different color. And then I finished up two of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade Dark Brown. And I believe this one is medium brown. Yes, medium brown and dark brown. Those were way too dark, so I was using a brow gel that was lightening them. So that worked out well. And then a Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit in the shade 4.5, which once again is way too dark for me. I am the shade 3 in Benefit products, so yeah. But these were all just tiny little samples, and I figured pairing those ones with a lighter shade brow gel would lighten them up just enough, and it worked out really well. So then I finished up a liquid highlighter. This was in my Partners in Cream. This is from The Balm. This is the Mary Duminizer. I absolutely loved it. The little bit of product that you do see in there is just dried on the sides. I used up all the usable product in there and I loved it. 
I finally am getting rid of this Revlon eyelash curler. I have my Shiseido one that I am really, really diligent about cleaning and keeping good. I love that Shis Shiseido one so much better than this one. The shape of it is much better suited for my eyes, so got rid of this one. I'm not counting that in like my totals or anything, but just so you guys can see. Okay, we'll leave foil packets for last, same as the other ones. So I got two MAC mascaras finished up, the In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash Mascara and the False Lashes Extreme Black Mascara. I didn't love either one of them. However, I believe the one... Yes, the one that I liked more was this one, and it was the Natural Bristle Brush one. This is the False Lashes one. The other one is the like silicone one, and I don't like that. Then the Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. That was okay. I liked it a bit. The Tarte Lifted Mascara. This is a beautiful like black-brown mascara, and it's so good for the gym. It says it's sweat-proof, and it like 100% is. I love this one. I do have it in the full size. Then the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. I love this mascara too. It is an excellent mascara. The reason why I didn't go through very many mascaras this year is because I have a ton of them that are in my drawer that are on their last leg, like four of them. So you'll probably see a lot more mascaras in the coming year of 2021 empties. And then I have a couple samples here. I can't believe I didn't finish a full-size primer. Like, that's just crazy to me. But I finished up this Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It's like the weirdest little, like, glass packaging. I kind of hated the packaging, but the product was amazing, so I obviously used it. And then I finished the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water Spray. This is a bottle I will be keeping. It's very easy, easy to refill it, and the sprayer on it is beautiful. So this is, like, perfect for a tiny little setting spray, like, travel size. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this bottle. I finished up one, count them, one liquid lipstick before November and December, but I finished up two total. But this was the little sample guide from the Sephora brand, and it was in the shade 01 Always Red, and I absolutely loved this red on me. It was like my favorite red, so I would consider repurchasing. However, I do have a bunch of reds right now that I do need to work through first. So the rest of these here are lip glosses, and you guys know that lip gloss is my favorite product, my favorite category of lip product. So I do finish a lot of these in a year. So this year I finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I finished eight liquid lipsticks this year, and I think that's pretty comparable to what I finished last year also. So this is the Alamar Cosmetics lip gloss. It's the Mother of Pearl gloss in the shade Sirenita. It was like a pink with a gold reflect. I really did like the product until it got to the bottom and you could like feel and taste the glitter particles. So for that reason, I wouldn't repurchase, but I did like it when I was wearing it. This is the Stila, I can't even remember what these are called, but it's like the one where it like clicks up. So I couldn't, there's no more clicking it. Ah, if I like break it, I can, but there's no more clicking it. I finished this at the very, very beginning of this year. So I couldn't call it an empty last year, but it is done. Then the Too Faced Lip Injection Glossy in the shade Milkshake. I really did enjoy this one. However, when I kissed my husband with this, he said he was so mad because his lips were burning. He said it was the worst sensation ever. And I didn't get, like, I don't know. I guess it just wasn't that bad for me, but I did really like this. I do think I have a couple more in my collection. I finished up the Becca. I think this is called the Lip Icing in the shade champagne no creme brulee this is the shade creme brulee and i believe it is the lip icing glow gloss if i can read that correctly and this was a beautiful lip gloss i absolutely love this one it didn't take me that long to finish and i would actually highly recommend this one i do have a couple more in my collection which i'm going to use up but yeah if you can get your hands on some of these they are really good and finally, I finished the Too Faced Sweet Peach Creamy Peach Lip Oil or Oil Lip Gloss in the shade Pure Peach. This was way too pink for me personally. 
I think I have one more tiny little one like this in my collection that I do and will use up, but I won't repurchase this color ever again. Okay, on to the foil packets that I finished. I finished two Bare Minerals foundation packets. This one had a shade range from Fair 01 to Medium Beige 12, and then it had the finishing powder. And this little sample of the finishing powder, I loved it so much that I ended up buying the full size during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. And then here's another little sampler. It just has three. I actually had another one inside of here that I had finished, but I think it got lost or thrown away or something. I'm not really sure what happened to it, but I finished up like three foil packets of these this year. I don't think I counted these as any kind of money value, but I just like to show that kind of stuff to show that I'm actually purchasing the things that I'm trying. So then I finished up two, well technically three, because I finished up one in November and December, but I finished up three of these Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primers. This is the silicone type like base primer, and I really, really love this primer. I think it's great. <clears throat> this is when, this was another like pore filling silicone type primer. It's from Peter Thomas Roth. It is the Skin to Die For No Filter Mattifying primer and complexion perfecter that is a name however this was much thicker than the smashbox one and i really like this one so this one was okay i will not purchase it again however if i have more in my collection i will use them then i finished up the first aid beauty coconut skin smoothie priming moisturizer i love this i have a full size in my drawer currently it's so glowy on the skin it's like beautiful the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer, I love this one as well. This primer plays so nicely with every other primer I've ever paired it with because it's so lightweight and hydrating, it can really mix in with any other primer you're looking to use up or if you have a primer that's a little too dry, this one is a beautiful mixer. Then the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Luminizer Primer. This was actually very nice as well. It was almost like a highlighting primer. Like it was very, very highlighty. But I kind of liked that, especially in the summertime when I ended up using it up. So I did like this one a lot. I used up one little foundation packet. And this is the Jouer, what is it? Essential High Coverage Foundation. I hated this. It was so so incredibly high coverage. If that's what you want and that's what you're looking for, I recommend this one a lot. It was literally, I could not see my skin at all through my foundation and I don't love that look. So um, yeah, I used this one time, I wore it and I ended up washing it off like three hours later because it was way too high coverage for me. Then I finished up a Tarte Deep Dive Makeup Makeup removing gel cleanser. I don't love this, but as a final step, like after you use one of the wipes, if you have a little bit of the residual makeup left over, this is actually very good to clean that off. However, I would go in with an actual cleanser afterwards to get this like oiliness off. Um, I have a couple more in my collection. I think I have like a travel size and like a baby baby sample size that I will use up, but I won't purchase any of these. Okay, on to my empties from November and December, everything down here at the bottom. I actually think I did super, super good trying to finish off a bunch of different products in November and December, and I'm pretty proud of myself, actually. So I did finish off two primers. This was the full size primer that I ended up finishing off. This is the e.l.f. Illuminating Face Primer. As you guys know, I hated this primer. It was no good. But I ended up pairing it with the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer and it ended up working out well. But this one is just too, it was too dry, it was too yellow, it was too glittery. It was just like everything wrong with a primer was this primer. So um, I do like the original e.l.f. primer, but this one was just a no-go for me. Then, like I said, I finished the sample of the Too Faced Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. This is, like I said, a beautiful pairing primer. Um, however, I don't love this one on its own, but I have used it on its own many times and it works just as well. 
I finished up the little sample of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Perfector Blurring Skin Tint with sunscreen, and this was the shade 06. I think I finished this off more so in the summertime. I had thrown it in my drawer because I had like one or two uses on it, but I didn't really want to use it. So I ended up pairing this with my white foundation and finished it off. I had two more uses on this, so I just finished it off to get it out of my collection. Then I finished the Glam Glow Glow Starter Mega Illuminating Moisturizer in the shade Nude Glow. This was like a priming moisturizer type of foundation for me for work. Like when I'm not really in the mood for foundation but I kind of want a tiny bit of coverage, I'll put this one on and I really do like it. I get a lot of compliments on how like good and glowy my skin looks when I wear this. So definitely finish that one off. I have a couple more in my collection. Okay, and then the creme de la creme of my empties. <laughs> I was so happy. You guys were probably following me on Instagram. Know that I finished this. I was so proud of myself for finishing this off. This is the Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean um, lip gloss and lipstick duo in Risk It All. And I finished off the lip gloss. She is all gone. I did take a Q-tip in there and dig some out, but the bottom was like that glittery mess and I didn't want to deal with it. So that part is finished. And then the lipstick is finished. I was so happy. I took pictures of it when it was flat and I loved this lipstick so much that I did decide to take it out of here and I put it into a pot in a palette. So I do want to finish this this year, but I am calling this a completely done product because if I don't end up finishing it, I still finish the usable product in this item. So I am really, really proud of myself for this one. It took me a long time, like four months of solid, solid everyday use to totally finish it off, but... I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. Then another liquid lipstick that I finished off is the Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipstick in the shade Stepping Out. This is my favorite lipstick or liquid lipstick formula and color of all time. It's so dried out now, so the product that is stuck on the outside is so dry, I could not use it anymore. But if you, I know you guys can't, but if you were able to look down the tube, it is completely empty anyways. So I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. It did take quite a number of uses to use up this little teeny tiny sample, but I'm still proud of myself for that. Then a couple more lip glosses. I finished up the Tarte H2O gloss in the shade Maldives or Maldives, whatever you want to call it. This looks very purple on the outside, but when you put it on your lips, it stains your lips a legitimate hot pink. Like that is just not a good look for me. So I didn't pull a stopper out of this one specifically. I didn't want to have to deal with it and I didn't love it enough to pull the stopper out. So I did use up all the usable product in here and I'm happy with that. So I do have a ton more from this package. It was like a set of like eight different colors. So I'm going to keep using this. I loved the formula. This color was just not for me. Then I finished up probably one of my favorite glosses out of all of the glosses that I finished up this year was the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip gloss in the shade Pink Tourmaline. And it wasn't even the shade or anything like that. This formula is beautiful. It is so comforting and moisturizing on the lips while it gives you some color. Ooh, and it lasts forever on the lips. Like you don't put it on and then immediately think, wow, did I even put on any lip product? Like this one was beautiful. So I did originally end up taking the stopper out, but I put it back in because it was in my 50 shades of pink project pan, I believe. So I wanted to be able to get a final weight on it for you guys. But I am so incredibly proud of this empty. Like I literally can't even tell you how proud I am of this empty. So I'm definitely, you know, this was a good one. I have purchased quite a few number of these since I finished this because I found out I love it so much. So I'm definitely going to use some more of these this upcoming year. And this little lip pencil that you guys can see is completely finished out. This was the Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner in the shade Hush Hush. 
I think it was in the shade Hush Hush. And it's just like a super nudie, like pink shade, but it's mostly just a straight up, like your lips but better nude. And I absolutely love this. This was like a travel size or like a sample size. It wasn't one of those teeny, teeny, tiny ones. It was like a decent size. And I absolutely love this, actually. I ended up wearing this more often than not, just by itself, not even underneath anything, because I enjoyed it so much. So I do have two more of these in my collection that I am more than happy to use. And the sharpening of this, like that wood scent, just brings me back to my childhood when I'd go to work with my dad. And everything about this product just makes me happy. So yes, love this one. I'm glad to have one as an empty. Then we have one Stila Glitter and Glow. This is in the shade Diamond Dust. What you guys can see left in here is completely dried out. I fixed it up a couple times and I used all of the product that I absolutely could, but it got to the point where it was just so dry, I just didn't wanna use it anymore. So that is this product here. I have quite a few number of these left in my collection. However, I won't purchase any more. And then the last products are the little foil packets. Like I said, I finished up the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. I finished the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This one I ended up, I think, squeezing into here and like using the products together to get this one finished out or a different one. I can't even remember, but I ended up using this up and I do love the primerizer a lot. And then I used a Bosha Makeup Breakup Cool Cleansing Oil. This actually worked really, really well. It was very gentle on the eyes. I got it in my eye a little bit and it didn't burn whatsoever. So I was really, really curious to pick up some more of this. Um, the full size is quite pricey and I have a ton of makeup removing stuff, but I did put this on my list as something to look for in the future when I'm running out of makeup cleansing oils and stuff like that. So this was the final category of all of my year-end empties for 2020. The makeup category, because I know this is the one that everybody's the most excited about, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of my empties for 2020. And once again, I will put on the screen all of the number of items that I used up in each category and the price amount that I used up in each category. I used up a fair number of items, which I am so proud of myself this year for getting through so many items. And you know, I'm kind of happy about where my collection is heading and getting my declutters done and just kind of loving my collection the way it is. So <sighs> anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye.